Okay. Imagine a world where you could have that very one random object you need in just one snap. Instead of having to rush to the store or text the four group chats you're in, you can look up a file online, press a few buttons, and have that item ready for you within a few hours. The technology of 3D printing has been revolutionized in the past few decades. 3D printers are capable of almost building anything. This can include buildings, prosthetic limbs, body parts, shoes, fabrics, and even candy. MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory has created a software that allows both liquid and solid materials to print conjointly to create a fully functional robot in a single print. Research centers are working with converting medical scans into computer-generated models to create custom, fully functional organs for people. Doctors Without Borders is using 3D scanning and design technologies to create prosthetic limbs for refugees. NASA is working with architects to create theoretical shelters that would be 3D printed on Mars. That was a lot, wasn't it? Is anyone else overwhelmed? Because I'm almost out of breath talking about these phenomenal, yet very, very intimidating things. OK. You know, let's take a step back. And let me tell you a little story about my experience with 3D printing. OK, imagine it's Halloween, and you're getting ready. And you realize you're missing a piece of your Halloween costume. You're going on Yelp, trying to find stores that are open that carry that piece. Everything is closed, and it is way too late to expedite a package through Amazon Prime. So, you, look up on, you go online, look up a file, press a few buttons, and then you wait. This exact thing happened to me last Halloween, and I was able to have that piece within one hour. And do you know what that piece was? It was beer holders for my Duff Man costume. <laughs> okay, so I know, I know you're sitting here thinking, yeah, this is cool, but I have no idea what she's talking about, so I'm just going to sit here and pretend like I know what's going on. Well, I want you all to know, I'm not an engineer. I'm not a computer scientist. I'm not even a straight-A student. I'm a normal human being, just like all of you, who decided to be open-minded about a new technology. And because I want to save money and look cool in front of my friends, but, you know, that's always a factor. And trust me, I have broken so, so, so many parts and shed way too many ugly tears trying to figure out this technology. Seriously, it's not cute. Okay. How about I explain to you the basics of how 3D printing works, so you're not sitting there utterly confused about what I'm talking about. There are two basic types of 3D printers. FDMs and SLAs. FDM printers, like the Prusa MK3 I have right here, print layer by layer in what is called an additive process. A hot extruder melts plastic and stacks it up until it reaches the top of the print. SLA printers, however, print out of a liquid bath, which is something like resin. A strong light is applied, and each layer is hardened, and the object is pulled out of the bath upside down, like the opening credits of Westworld. FDMs use spools of plastic, and they generally cost about $20 a pound. SLAs use more high-quality liquids so, that are more expensive, so for the sake of efficiency and affordability, I will be speaking on FDM printers today. FDM printers use a large variety of materials, including plastic, metals, carbon fiber, wood, metals, I just said metals, <laughs> coffee, hemp, and even beer. These computers 
can take models from online websites, such as Thingiverse, that have thousands of digital models free to download from people all over the world. You can print anything from a belt to a paper clip. You can use basic modeling softwares, such as SketchUp, to generate a model online and transfer it to your printer. Or you can ask your sleep-deprived architecture friend to build a model for you in exchange for a free mail. Seriously, I'm not kidding. I've done it before. OK. Now I all want you to think about the true possibilities that can emerge from these printers if people are more comfortable with them. Imagine if your home came with a 3D printer built into it. You can order files online from companies like Amazon, and they can send it directly to your printer. You can have that item ready within a few hours to use, instead of sitting by your window waiting for the package to show up. I have a theory. I have a theory that 3D printers could one day be treated like fax machines. I mean, who knew fax machines would make a comeback, right? You can send your coworkers, your friends, or family members a file based on a form of identification. You can send your friend that bottle opener for their 21st birthday, or your mom a sculpture you made for Mother's Day. And for those individuals who cannot afford a 3D printer, they can go to their local Kinko's or Office Depot and receive an object fax for a small fee. We can let these technologies benefit those of any income level by providing a simplified product for any skill level. This concept of having a faxable 3D printer can also resolve a lot of controversies associated with the freedom of this technology. People believe we must ban 3D printers due to the risks associated with the freedom of design. People can print guns, commit plagiarism, and reproduce fingerprints to open up personal items like cell phones. But aren't there risks associated with every new technology? Whether it's AI, stem cell research, microwaves, or even cell phones, people are always afraid of the negative risks that can emerge from these technologies. However, with 3D printing, there are multiple solutions to this. Companies can assure that printers can only read one file type, and that file can only be produced in their offices, on their computers, by their staff. AI recognition software can be implemented into these printers to be able to detect similarities between the custom prints and the mechanical systems of guns. Waste is another issue among the 3D printing community. However, nowadays there are so many environmentally friendly options out there. There are wood filaments, recycled plastics, and even water-soluble options. Unused models can be shredded up and reproduced back up into plastic spools. One of the, besides the risks, one of the largest factors affecting 3D printing is the intimidation of this technology. Individuals automatically associate 3D printing with complex things, such as robotics or aircraft parts. The media tends to portray 3D printing in terms of its risks and the complexities associated with it. But tell me, do you know how your 2D printer works? Down to every mechanical system? Or do you just press a few buttons and change the ink every time it tells you to. 
Why can't 3D printers be treated the same way? 3D printing peaked from 2012 to 2013, but then completely fell off in 2015. Martha Stewart herself launched a campaign with MakerBot in 2014. But what happened? Intimidation. Now is the time for people to stop being afraid of a technology for its complexity. Oxford Dictionary states, the technology is the application of scientific knowledge for practical purposes. It is literally made to make complicated things simple. We must now inspire individuals to reach out and experiment with these, in these fields to someday make them usable and affordable for everyone. 3D printers used to cost $100,000 in the 80s. Now, you can buy a desktop printer for $300 up to $2,000. I'm currently printing products for 10% of their in-store costs. This wrench cost me 40 cents to print. Outdated construction methods can finally be simplified with the opportunity to print cheaper and faster. Homes can someday become resilient by having printers that rebuild themselves during and after natural disasters. Now, after hearing all this, I want you to picture a world where 3D printing can benefit everyone. Instead of the expense of having to deliver care packages around the world, 3D printers can provide the appropriate tools, such as a wrench, and resources to communities. Individuals in these communities can be tasked with, spraining, with scanning broken or sprained limbs and putting it into a software that instantly generates a cast to fit the injury. And these same technologies can inspire those individuals to further their education in these fields. My grandmother passed away this summer due to cancer. Her village in Romania did not have the appropriate tools to detect the masses. The medical community didn't have the right resources to take care of her. What if 3D printing could have saved her? could have saved others. So, now, you might be thinking, what do we do? Or more importantly, can I do something? A professor once told me that in order to save the world, you must become an engineer. But that is the exact mindset that causes innovation to occur at slower rates for targeted fields. All you have to do is be a creative thinker, find a problem, and think of a simple solution for it. Become aware of everyday tasks and think of ways to simplify them. Start asking yourself what is needed for change and how it can be done. Now is the time that you realize 
that 3D printing can provide the solutions to your questions. But most importantly, have fun. <laughs> Thank you.